G'day everyone and welcome to the Grand Court Wimmera webinar. I'm Izzy Hutchinson, the Grower Services Manager for the Southern Region based here in Wagga. I will be your host this afternoon for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Lillema, Nil, Matoa, Natimuk, Karpalak, Narracourt and Hamilton sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone and has posed plenty of challenges, but one positive has been the return of some decent rainfall across the East Coast. It's an exciting time for the industry and we are pleased to be involved in hopefully bringing home another reasonable crop across the Victorian region. No doubt some of the topics discussed this afternoon will lead to further questions. You may have noticed already, but this, this chat, all this webinar is equipped with a chat feature. I strongly encourage you that you utilise this and will endeavour to answer any questions as we go along. If we don't answer your question prior to the end of the webinar, you can expect a call from the appropriate Grain Corp team member and they will discuss further. Given it's a busy time of the year, I will aim to wrap up within the hour. So please understand that we may not be able to drill down into too much detail around operations at every site. To kick off the presentation this afternoon, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our local site manager team. G'day, my name's Fraser Kent, site manager at Nil and Lillema. Returning to Nil this year after 12 months on the Natty Muck line for last harvest. Um, working together with my team this year, Will O'Leary as the assistant site manager at Nil, Jason McCartney again up at Lillema and Dylan Nat on the second shift up there. Um, both sites are on track to be empty before harvest time. Um, we've had some civil works going at Nil for the two new bunkers last year, been resurfaced, and an additional bunker up at Lillema going in at the moment. Um, hopefully we can work together for another successful year this year. Hi, I'm Lani Hobbs, overseeing Natty Muck, Carflack, Hamilton and Narracourt. This year is shaping up to be a great year with minimal carryover. Our supervisors for this harvest at Natty Muck will be Cameron and Sean. Hamilton, we see Trev and Alicia. Carflack, we'll have Nathan. And Narracourt, we'll have Ethan. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you at harvest. G'day and welcome to the Wimmera webinar. My name is Nathan Tepper, the site manager here at Grand Corp and Matawa. Uh, looking forward to another successful harvest. Um, enjoyed last year coming back. Um, being a local boy, it's great to interact again with the local growers that I've grown up with over the time. This year we're going to have Ben Lakin as our assistant site manager who will be running our afternoon shift and I will look after the morning shift. Any questions or queries you have, feel free to give us a call. Hopefully that provides you with some insight into who you'll see this coming harvest. I now want to take a moment to speak to Nigel Lotz, our General Manager of Operations. Good afternoon, Nigel, and thanks for your time, the Savo. Can you give us an update as to what the business has been doing over the last 12 months to ensure that we're ready to receive this crop? Yeah, good afternoon, Izzy. Great to be on the Wimmera Area Pre-Harvest webinar. Um, from my point of view, these webinars are certainly a sign of the times. It's been a super challenging year. But, uh, hey, the rain came. That's what I'm very grateful for, and I'm sure all East Coast growers are grateful for. Just a bit of an insight to what's happening around the place. Uh, Queensland's certainly been a lot more challenging harvest. They haven't had the luck of the Wimmera area that you had down for the past couple of years. But we're you know, well and truly through central Queensland into southern Queensland and northern New South Wales. Um, they've been going not too bad. The grain is you know, good quality, nice bright grain, and the teams are doing a good job. So we're you know, well and truly into it. In terms of what's been happening at Grain Corp this year, again, another big year for us. A very, uh, yeah, a memorable year, I'll say, in terms of what, where we're setting ourselves up for the future. Key things that have happened this year is we've, and you may have seen this in the press, but we've had the, demolger, the merger of our malt business. Um, that, that occurred in February, March. What that means for Grain Corp now is it's very clear what our key business units are, which is our East Coast team. We've got a processing team and an international team and a feeds, fats, oil, commodity trading team. In terms of the East Coast business and Grain Corp as such, after the, uh, after the restructure, it means we've got a very, very solid balance sheet, practically no core debt, which for a business with a strong uh, influence in agribusiness is uh, very, very important. Also, in, in March, we had the appointment of our new CEO, Robert Spurway. He comes to us from Fonterra, uh, in, based out of New Zealand. Previously, he was working for Goodman Fielder uh, in Australia. Uh, what I like about Robert is certainly he's got a very approachable um, he's from an operating background, so very empathetic to the needs of the business. Uh, it's been difficult for him with the COVID, but that's also presented opportunities uh, like this webinar. We've had many webinars with him 
getting to meet our teams across the country. So it's been great. In terms of harvest prep, that's the key thing in our mind at the moment, Izzy. Uh, as I said, well and truly underway in, in the north of the state. Our, our core focus has been on you know, what can we do to prepare ourselves to monetize uh, the grain for growers. That is our role. The key focus areas have included one communication, which this webinar has been part of, and also just looking at you know, contract needs of growers, uh, setting up COVID safe operations. I'll go into that shortly a bit more. Strategic capital projects, that's always a big focus for us, not just on our digital platforms such as Crop Connect, which we're continually enhancing, uh, but also our physical infrastructure. Uh, topical always is stackers. Uh, we've got 21 new stackers coming into the fleet, 10 new dogs. Uh, TARPS is a big piece as well. Also on other site-based works, uh, I know it's always very topical. We last year did some great work at Nil, getting some new bunker capacity there, about 50k. Uh, Lilima has been on the run at the moment, and uh, Craig will go into a bit more detail there. We've got some great live photos. Maintenance is the other bigger one. Like growers, uh, very empathetic to uh, we need to be ready to receive your grain, so a big focus area. And finally, the Harvest Casual Recruitment Program, an ominous task for our East Coast team. We need over 3,000 people. We've had over 6,000 applicants, but you know, as we weed through it, there is always challenges. It's been a big task and the team has done a great job. Just I'll link back onto the COVID safe operations. It's been a really important for us. Um, we've been dealing with this like a lot of you have since, since March. Um, it is very real. I think we're very conversant with you know, social distancing and just having that respect for each person's distance. Uh, that's what you sh will expect at the site. Uh, we've been handling this, as I said, since March across all of our supply chains. We haven't had a hitch to date. I'm very, very proud of how the teams have handled that. Uh, and from my point of view, keeping you safe and your supply chains open, as well as our team safe and the supply chains open for you to use is a key priority. The team will run through in a bit more detail what this involves, but just rest assured uh, we're doing everything possible to, to make sure it's an efficient and safe harvest from a COVID point of view. Finally, just hope that everyone has a prosperous harvest. I hope everything runs smoothly. Um, no doubt, you know, it's, it's a big season. Will there be interruptions, weather events? I'm sure we will see that, but we are, we're very well equipped to handle that. So thank you. Lovely. Thanks for that update, Nigel. It sounds like there's definitely been plenty happening across the business to ensure we're ready for this coming harvest. One thing I'm interested in, though, Nigel, is you've we've, we have seen some change at this business over the last couple of years. Where do you think the business is going in the next three to five years, particularly in the Victorian region? Yeah, look, it's a great question, and I hope that everyone's been seeing this to date. You know, undoubtedly, we have a core focus on the customer. Our customer centricity is critical to our business. As I said, our role is to monetize a grower's grain. So everything we do on the ECA team is focused around that from the end-to-end -end supply chain to get the best value back to farm gate. Uh, and that ultimately then supports regional real economies and, and grain corp as a whole. From my point of view, key focus areas, again, have been that connectivity. Again, in this period, adapting to COVID, the webinars have been part of that. And on an infrastructure point of view, ensuring that we optimize our supply chains to, increase, uh, to improve efficiency and lower the transport rates. And on top of that, then, is the people. We've got a great team and just, you know, continuing to build that capability, which, you know, our frontline leaders, site managers, they're, they're key and having them at a level that's to handle the growers' needs and to handle you know, all the tasks they've got to handle on a day-to-day you know, -day basis under pressure at harvest is really important. Brilliant. Sounds like it's a pretty exciting time to come for Grain Corp. Now, Nigel, I've got an audience question here from Alice. Alice would like to know, so you've been with Grain Corp for several years now. What is it that excites you about this business? Yeah, I've actually been with Grain Corp for eight years now and I've been on an exciting journey. I've been a big part of the uh, Regen program and building new infrastructure. So what excites me is being part of a business that is evolving. It's evolving to the needs of the customer. Uh, we are listening and it's exciting that we're actually You've got the ability, and everyone on this call has the ability to, to lead that change and implement that change. Uh, I'm proud to be part of a, a, a high-performing team, as I said. Again, a lot of the members on this call are that, and it's, yeah, it is super exciting to be part of a, a valued supply chain and making Australian agribusiness efficient on a world stage. Lovely. Thanks for that, Nigel. Now, for the remainder of the session, we're actually going to do a QA and a style format. And along with Nigel, we've got three additional talented staff members on board to answer any of your questions. I strongly encourage you to post your questions in the chat section and we'll endeavour to cover them off. So the panel this afternoon includes Nigel, but it also includes Craig Cochran, our Supply Chain South Senior Manager, Jed Bibby, the Area Manager, Greg Clossy, the Grain Marketer for the Southern Mellian Wimmera Regions. To kick 
To kick things off, I want to go across to Craig. So, Craig, we've heard there from Nigel that we've had some updates across the, across the area in the last 12 months. Can you just give us an update as to what's been happening out on site? Uh, yeah, Izzy, there should be a photo going up of Lillimer. Um, so, obviously, Lillimer maxed out last year and with great support from our grower base. Um, so, we actually undertook the uh, installation of a new bunker pad out there this year. So, it gives us about an extra 27,000 tonnes of storage. Um, just got the update from Jed. The pad should be done uh, next week, so certainly well and truly in time for harvest, uh, and it allows us to take in that extra grain uh, that was out and about last year. And uh, Jed tells me the crops out there are even better this year, so, uh, yeah, that'll be well supported, I'm sure. And then the other upgrade that we did for last year's harvest, and we were lucky to get it in in time, was we put in an extra 50,000 tonnes if we changed the slide to nil, um, and that was the first stage of the nil upgrade uh, and it was really well supported once again, um, and we filled those bunkers, and it was great to see. Um, our team did a fantastic job uh, with the time frame that we gave them to get them in and operational, which was great, um, and we really look forward to the next stage in the future. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks for that, Craig. It's certainly an exciting time for the growers out around those sites. Now, um, Jed, we heard there from our site managers, but can you just give us a bit of a recap as to what sites in the area will store malt, barley, canola and any specialty grades of wheat this year? Yeah, thanks, Izzy, and, and welcome everyone aboard. Uh, yeah, the malt, barley will, will be very similar to last year where Lilma, Nil, Nadimak and Matara will be taking malt, barley. Uh, Spartics will be all at all them sites and we'll also take a Latrobe at Nil and Matala, and Matala will also take Planet. Um, so it's uh, pretty well covered um, with our three major malts that we're seeing around the Wimmera at this stage. Thanks, Izzy. Perfect. Thanks for that update, Jed. Now, Craig, I keep hearing in the media, particularly for the ag industry, that some are struggling to find staff and labour due to COVID. What's Graincourt been doing and how are we going with our recruitment across the East Coast? Look, Izzy, yeah, we certainly uh, went out hard and we went out early on all sorts of platforms to uh, bring in staff because uh, particularly with COVID, there was some real challenges around it. I'm excited to tell everyone that uh, we're over 95% covered in Victoria as a whole. Um, so that's great, um, particularly in the skill positions. Um, and then uh, we're now really comfortable also with our bunker positions in the majority of the state. Um, across the East Coast, uh, we had the 3,000 positions that we advertised and we actually got over 5,000 applications, which was fantastic and it was great to see a bunch of people keen to get into the agricultural side of our business. Um, we've also factored in the capability to run double shifts at most sites across Victoria, which is also pleasing to see and we have that coverage in place. Lovely. It sounds like things are progressing quite well for the Victorian recruitment. Jed, can you just shed some light in regards to what locally recruitment looks like? Yeah, sorry, Izzy. Uh, <laughs> connection just dropped out for a second. Can you repeat that question? Sorry. Yeah, can you just shed some light into what the local recruitment um, is looking like and how we're tracking in that space? Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Yeah, uh, certainly very excited uh, this year. The women pretty well filled all their positions on all our sites, which uh, generally was scratched right to the start of harvest. So very, very happy. Uh, as Craig said, it was uh, one of our major focus to get this right. Our people is the most important we need on our field. And uh, and I'm very, very happy to say that uh, probably not, over 90% are the local people. So it's really given something back to the community as well, which uh, hopefully will support um, our four major sites uh, will certainly, certainly handle the double shifts again. So uh, I think that's been very successful over the last few years in the Wimmera. So we'll conduct our staff very, and shifts very similar. I uh, strongly suggest to all the committees to contact the site managers if they would like to think uh, ours uh, need to be extended. Uh, we're certainly ready and raring to go for hopefully a very efficient and a safe harvest. Brilliant. It's pleasing to hear that we've got the staffing requirements pretty well organised there. What about equipment, Craig? How are we going to ensure that we've got enough equipment on site to receive this harvest? 
Thanks, Iz. Well, obviously, uh, everybody's talked about the potential of this crop, and we are very excited by that. Um, but we saw that this massive plant went in back in March, and so we started planting then earlier than normal. Um, but when you throw a COVID pandemic in on top of our normal, normal harvest challenge planting, uh, yeah, it was a really intense planting season for us. Happy to say that our plans are locked down and multiple contingency plans are in place. Um, so, but to support these plans, we've actually spent over $15 million in the last six months on new tarps, the 21 additional stackers that Nigel mentioned, and the 400 tonne an hour drive over hoppers to support those. When you talk about the um, stacker movement plans, they're actually working really well. Um, we've already seen stackers moving from Queensland down into southern New South Wales, and they'll continue to flow on down into Victoria over the coming weeks. So easy all in all, I think that, uh, yeah, we've got more gear, uh, we've got better planning, and we're, in a real, we're really confident about how we're going to bring this harvest in. Brilliant. That probably creates a good segue to a question I've got here from Jared. Given the wet forecast, has any work been done to improve this, improve and speed up the falling number process out on site? I might get Nigel to talk about this one. Yeah, look. Thanks, Izzy. Good question, and it's, I know this is always a challenge, and I understand the emotional side of when these machines come out, how that affects uh, your back pocket as a grower, so very empathetic to that. Um, they are a necessary evil, though. Just to give you an idea, in the north, which we're, you know, this week we're running into the wet weather, uh, the quality team, it's a, a new formation we've got there in terms of how they all work together, but they had all the gear out ready to go a number of weeks ago. Um, as that's finished up there, it'll come down uh, in preparation. For Victoria, um, Murphy's Law hopefully will prevail. We're well set up, well prepared. We will have less events, but as best as possible, more uh, actual pieces of equipment to put and following number machines in place uh, so that if it does happen, we can uh, ensure we you know, move, you know, keep, the, keep the sites moving as quickly as possible. Brilliant. Thanks for that update. Nigel, and thanks for that question, Jared. Please keep them coming. Now, we heard there from Nigel a little bit earlier on that the business has been very busy over the past six months getting ready for a COVID-safe harvest. I'll go across to Craig to do a bit of a deep dive into what this actually means and what the changes are out on site. Thanks, Izzy. Obviously, uh, we've really looked at our delivery process across the East Coast um, and we've developed a way to reduce the human contact. Um, almost every one of our delivery functions will be contact free um, while maintaining our commitment to our quality service. Uh, Grain Corp's advanced contact free technology platforms, fast way for grain sampling and receival and Crop Connect for digital transactions are going to be central to this revised plan that we've got. Um, and they are, it's great that they're already in place. Um, the following processes are uh, effective immediately. Uh, number one, minimising the movement of all Grain Corp staff and customers at all times. This includes, but it's not limited to, no access inside our sample stands and our waverages. Um, we're also particularly aiming to minimise the movement of truck drivers on our sites. Social distancing and hygiene measures will be enforced as standard practice at all sites, along with all drivers and growers being required to scan in via a QR code reader at the sample stand and then again when the trucks tear off at the waverage. Two, the use of the updated delivery advice form. Our updated delivery advice form will assist with reducing the contact between Grain Corp staff and our grower truck drivers. Um, and it also will allow us to drive some efficiencies through our sample stand. Uh, the del delivery advice must be used for all grower samples delivered to our sites and all grain deliveries. Samples will need to be provided to Grain Corp in Ziploc bags, um, and then we'll test this sample and we'll call and text you, or call or text you, um, with the results as soon as we can. Um, please note that delivery advice notes will not be returned after use. Uh, the third pillar of our changes, no option to select cash or transfer grain to contracts at our sample stands or waybridges. Um, all deliveries will be placed into warehousing and transferred via Crop Connect or the grower hotline on 1800 Grains. Uh, we'll still collect NGR, paddock details, treatment status and vendor decks at the sample stand or Weybridge and maintain active live pricing at our sites for you. The fourth pillar, there'll be no transfer of clipboards around the site with drivers. Any paperwork required will not be handed back or signed and the size of the text on our paperwork will be increased to assist in reading from a distance, for example, when you go to the hopper to tip off. 
Um, if you have any questions, please contact your local site manager, your grain marketer, or call the grower hotline on 1-800-GRAINS. Perfect. Thanks for that update. I think we might take a visual look at the flow chart um, there, Craig, and just get an understanding of how trucks move around the site. And I think that'll also answer the question that we've got here from Matt, who would just like to know what the process change is for truck drivers regarding COVID on site. No worries at all. So, yeah, so a truck turns up on site as per normal. It proceeds to the sample stand. At the sample stand, uh, you'll be tested and then you'll scan on as a visitor with your QR code. Um, you'll present the delivery advice form. It's either going to be at the bottom of the sample stand or at the top, depending on the spacing. We've got to make sure that we get the social distancing correct. Um, we'll get your form. Uh, we'll process the load. We'll print out your sample docket. Um, and then obviously we'll give it back to you. And that's the only time that transfer will occur um, until later on. And we'll then, you'll have the opportunity to contest the load. Um, if everything's right, then you'll proceed to the waverage for your gross weight. You'll then be directed to your tip-off point. Um, you'll get to the tip-off point. Uh, you'll show your docket, um, which will enlarge font to the uh, attendant and they'll tip you. You'll go to the uh, tear-off waverage and we'll print the receivable docket for you and we'll also get you to scan out. Uh, the scan out process is very, very quick. Um, so once you've logged on for the first time and you've got your details in there, it's a couple of seconds. So uh, yeah, that's the, how the process flow will work is. Lovely. Thanks, Craig. And thanks for that question there, Matt. Now I've got another question from Brenda. As you outlined, growers are required to provide the grower delivery advice form when delivering and doing your samples. Can you just explain this form a little bit further and where do we get this form from? No worries at all. So the, the, the form is pretty intuitive. Uh, it's going to ask you for things like your NGR, um, trading name, contact name, uh, your phone numbers, um, commodity, variety, um, paddock ID, it's sort of optional. Uh, and then you've also got your uh, treatment. Uh, if you've treated the crop with anything, um, we just need to know that as well. And then the normal things like your truck rego um, and permits. Uh, the good thing is that it's uh, available online on our website and it's an editable version, so you can actually pre-populate it, uh, so then you can print those out and you don't have to write it every time. Um, you can also call 1-800-GRAINS uh, to get copies and you can also call your local site manager. Um, we have got books being sent out to the sites. They'll hopefully be there late this week or early next week um, and you'll be able to use those as well. Perfect. Thanks for that, Craig. Um, I've got a question in coming in from David. Can we get the delivery sheets posted to the website as a PDF so that we can download and print off instead of getting them from the sample stand? Uh, I believe that there's both versions on there is. There's the editable one and there's a PDF one. Yeah, perfect. I did notice on that delivery advice that we just had shown there, Craig, that there's a question about in-crop glyphosate treatment of barley. Can you just elaborate on this for me? Definitely. Um, in-crop treatment of glyphosate can affect the germination of the seed. Um, this treatment needs to be declared uh, for both our inter international customers and our domestic customers so that we can ensure the quality of the product that goes into them. Um, so treated barley will be binned and ticketed as feed barley, regardless of the test results that have been treated, um, and we're assuming that they make uh, bio one quality. It's really critical that we get this information and that it's 100% accurate, so then we can properly uh, bin the grain as it comes in. Lovely. Thanks for that, Craig. I've got one here from Tracy. What's the workaround for drivers that don't have access to a smartphone for the QR readers? Great question, Tracy. We will have a manual sign in an out sheet, similar to when you go to restaurants, et cetera, or cafes in uh, towns like Matoa. Um, so, yeah, we'll have those on site and it'll be fine. Brilliant. Thanks for that question, Tracy. Now I'll go across to Jed. Jed, can you just give me an understanding of the process around retests and whether that's changed for this harvest? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Izzy. Um, there's only just one probably slight change there, Izzy. Obviously, um, being contacted, um, we'll, what we'll basically be asking the growers now when we they get the sample docket back, as Craig explained there before, 
they can growers can have a look at that sample docket and um, you know if they find that they're just out of spec and they would like another test, they can re they can just ask the sampler and the sampler will retest out of that that bucket. Um, or if they elect to, they can go around the in their truck and come back to the line. So things have changed a little bit. Um, obviously not going in the sample stand, but they certainly can have uh, a retest done there. Um, and probably one thing I just uh, just to remind the growers that the crop demiser will be here again this year. So, um, you know, just have a very good understanding of the crop demise procedure that Grain Corp has put in place over the last few years. Busy. Brilliant. Thanks, Jed. What about samples? So we heard there from Craig that the delivery process has changed slightly. What do growers do with samples and when do they, where do they go when they come into the sites? Yeah, another good question, and I've had this uh, asked of me just recently after talking to a few growers. Um, I've got, a, I've just put a little sample together um, with the delivery of the device that Craig's uh, just spoke about. So I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Um, so a couple of things there we just asked with with the growers. Um, just make sure you have got the sip up bag with the delivery device in it. One thing that's going to be very very important is that uh, when we're filling in the delivery device forms, clearly. Um, write as good as you possibly can because that could slow the procedure down. So please uh, yeah, hand, hand print it and so we can get a good there. From that that process, uh, the samplers will do the test when they can get to the test. And we'll, we'll, this year, there's a little bit of difference. We're going to ring the grower or text the grower or contract or the number on that delivery advice and they'll inform what that, that result was all about. Um, the other thing we all done over the last few years as well is, is um, our, when we do see samples come in on site, our uh, site managers have been very, very good with the SMS messaging that we uh, will send results out through the SMS list that we have for that site as well. Um, so, you know, if one bloke brings a sample in from the north, um, we'll clearly tell this sample's come from the north of Nil or Matawa, and we'll certainly give everyone a bit of a guidance. We've had a lot of good feedback over the last few years. They've been very, very uh, positive for the growers out in the, out in the paddocks to see what everyone else is get, doing at the moment. So we'll, we'll do that as a process as well. Perfect. Some great initiatives there, Jed. So thanks very much for that. Now, just remember, if you do have questions about any of these topics, please utilise that, cheap, that chat feature and we'll answer them. I've got a question here, Greg, um, come in from Terry. If you're going contactless, how does the grower sell their grain over the way bridge? Yeah, thanks for that. As we heard from Craig earlier, um, each load will be placed automatically into the warehouse on receival now. Um, so that just takes that pressure off the driver regarding the uh, marketing decision at the point of delivery. Um, where in the past they may have been asked to decide on cash, contract, pool or warehouse. It's just going straight in, into the warehouse now. So we will still have cash prices um, posted from Grain Corp and other multiple buyers as well. And likewise, like similar to previous years, they will be able to be altered per each hour. Um, so then the grower can simply jump onto cropconnect.com.au or um, onto the Grain Corp app to transfer after delivery onto any of those cash prices if they are looking to sell for cash. And further to that, there's also the 1800 Grains hotline available to do so over the phone if you ever need to. In regards to Crop Connect slash the Grain Corp app, uh, this is a great tool, so encourage any growers that still haven't familiarised yourselves with that to jump on board. We do have uh, tutorials loaded up onto YouTube now as well to show how to get the best out of some of the features there. Again, our 1800 Grains team can be contacted with any help you may require to utilise it. And um, as an example of one of the features with push notifications, you can set it up to get um, a buzz on your phone uh, once any particular truckload has finished um, tipping and weighing off at the site. So you instantaneously will be able to grab the grade and the tonnage that's gone through there. And if you are looking to cash uh, that grain, then uh, that's quite convenient because you can then just click through on the phone um, to load up onto one of the cash prices, if you wish. Perfect. You mentioned there that all <laughs> grain will go into warehouse and then we utilise Crop Connect to do sales. What costs and other benefits are involved in this process, please, Greg? 
Sure, no worries. With um, utilising crop connected self, it's free for growers, so there's no cost there. Um, in regards to warehousing fees, as we brought in last year and now ongoing, um, we have the month of delivery with the following two months at no cost. Uh, so as an example there, with a December delivery, uh, that ticket will get right out to the end of February before any warehousing fees will commence. If you take that a step further, at $1.71 per tonne per month as the um, fee following that. You, you can carry grain right out to, say, the end of May, but not much more than 5 bucks a tonne to that time of year. So when you look at that, that's quite a cost-competitive method of storage. In regards to uh, other benefits of warehousing, you'll have the opportunity, as Jed mentioned there, with crop demiser before, you'll have the opportunity um, with warehouse grain to potentially upgrade any tickets that may have just missed um, on the spec. So no changes year on year to that uh, program. So in order to get that regrade done in the warehouse, that's a phone call again to our 1800 Grains team to do so. We will be sending text notifications out for any loads that we see potentially eligible for that. Uh, but you don't need to wait for that. We'll have all the same hurdles as previously in place, and that includes that site stack average hurdle. So um, as always, I encourage growers to chip away at upgrading your tickets as you go along throughout harvest, and some people like to do that daily just to check in whether there's anything there to be upgraded and ready to sell. Lovely. Thanks for that, Greg. Now, I've got a couple of audience questions here that we'll cover off. The first one's in regards to payment terms. Can I have a contract but get paid next financial year? I'll get you to answer this one as well, please, Greg. Yeah, sure. Yes, you can. Um, firstly, I'll just mention, I think that most people are now aware anyway, but our standard payment terms into the Grain Corp site, if selling to Grain Corp, is um, two business days. Uh, but certainly on contract, we can arrange for that payment to be pushed back to July next year. Um, so at the moment, if you were to sell in that fashion throughout harvest or right to the end of January, um, you'll be looking at a $6 top up on the canola price. Uh, $4 extra a tonne for wheat and $3 for barley. So, um, yeah, that option is definitely available and we're quite happy to help with that. Uh, I should also mention the Harvest 10 pool is up and running again this year. So there's a variety of payment options there and one of those is fully deferred as well if any growers are interested in partaking in that. Each of those um, pools options are paid out by the end of October next year. Lovely. Thanks for that. I've got another one here from Jeremy. It sounds like the sites are ready to receive the grain this harvest. Is the business also ready for the export program on the East Coast? I'll get Nigel to give us an update of what's been happening down at the ports. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Good question. And look, in terms of this year, it is going to be a big export year, which we haven't seen for a little while. But our ports have been busy right across the East Coast. Uh, firstly, we had an importing program over the course of this last year more focused down in Victoria, they have been running some export um, shipments, which is really good. So we are match fit. Uh, the key focus then is just the detailed cleaning of all the and maintenance of all the facilities to make sure we're ready and the staffing to just increase the hours of operation. Um, you know, a lot of places will be running 24-7 to meet the, the programs. Uh, the key other focus has been just optimising our supply chain network. As you all know, we have challenges with the, the volume of uh, receivables that comes into a, a port like Geelong. So for us, the key focus is yeah, optimising the rail plans, upcountry sites, uh, and the, the ships going out. It's all got to run very well to uh, synchronise um, a smooth harvest and a smooth export program. Lovely. Thanks for that. And thanks very much for that question there, Jeremy. Um, now, Greg, as we just heard, we've got a fair bit going on down at the port from Nigel, but what options do the growers have for delivery direct down to the ports um, post-harvest? Yeah, we have contract pricing available at the moment for wheat, barley and canola into Geelong and also for wheat into Portland. Our standard payment terms on port deliveries now is two business days as well, so that's a new development this year, which is terrific. We do have the option to defer port delivery payments out to July as well, for those that wanted to look at that. Uh, as an example, currently we're pricing APW1 in the low 320s delivered port, uh, so if anyone wanted to um, look into the details there on any of those contract types, you can get in contact with myself or the rest of our team, uh, the grain marketing team based here at Morong. Lovely. Thanks for that update, Greg. 
Now, we've got another question in regards to the border crossings. Has there been any communication with SA about the trucks delivering over the border within the 70k limit? Understand the situation may change prior to harvest. I might get um, Craig to give us an update on this one. Thanks, Izzy. Um, we certainly have been in discussions with the government. Um, to be honest, it's it's challenging to get a straight answer out of them. Um, but I think that you're right. There will be changes coming, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. And so by the time we do hit our straps in, uh, on the border, we will have it sorted. Um, and at the moment, we are trying to find ways to make it more efficient for our growers and truck drivers, both uh, heading into New South Wales and back and South Australia and back. Uh, and we'll have more details to come on that. Perfect. Thanks for that one. Now, talking about COVID and some changes that we've had, it's a good segue into a question that we've got here. In the unlikely event of a COVID case out on site, how would this be handled and what are the likely effects to our growers? I might get Nigel to um, to answer this one. Yeah, thanks, Is And another very relevant question. Um, Craig touched on before about the redundancy plans. This is part of that. So, uh, Murphy's Law, uh, we've been working on well, what will happen if there is a, uh, you know, a, a shutdown required at a site. Uh, we've seen on the news, sites such as abattoirs, et cetera, have this requirement. So we've been going through what that looks like on a site. Part of the, well, what we want the growers to do as well is part of not moving into the different parts of the site means that we can isolate it potentially. So it may only mean that a weigh ridge piece goes down or a sample stand piece goes down. So if that happens, uh, or sorry, in the event that that happens and it just you know, mitigates the, the time involved to get the back up and running, whether it's through a cleaning process, et cetera. We, within our system, we do have means and ways for you know, keep clearing the line in terms of uh, mitigating measures, which we'll do. Uh, I suppose most importantly, um, yeah, we, I would say just listen to the site manager when you're on site. If something happens and we're going to close down uh, in an event, uh, an unforeseen event that we get a, a COVID infection on site, the, through the text messaging service, uh, the site manager will be messaging out. Uh, it may be you know, going to another closer site, I suppose, would be a great option to alleviate the volume at that site. But I'm confident that we will be very quickly about to shut down a site and start it up again. Um, it will be a challenge that we'll have to deal with when it comes. We haven't had that yet, as I said. Uh, I'm confident with our, you know, particularly in Victoria, how the numbers are going down, that risk is going down. I'm confident with the procedures that we're putting in place that Craig went through that that will also mitigate it. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking about this a lot. So um, confident we'll be able to deal with it. Izzy? Perfect. That's great to hear. Now, going back to our discussion there on ports, Greg, I'll get you to answer this one for me. Do I need to have a time slot when delivering down to the port? Uh, yes, each um, load would need to be time slotted um, with a contract either with Grain Corp or with any other buyer. So any grain that's sold to Grain Corp, our staff will assist you through that process as well, of course. Um, and further to that, I think it's from the 1st of February that we would need to ensure that all um, loads have been fumigated and there would need to be a vendor deck supplied per contract in relation to that as well. Lovely. Thanks for that. Now, I've got a question here from Emma. I'm interested to understand more about the changes that have been made to the canola sustainability. Can you give us an update on that, please, Greg? Yes, well, it's very straightforward these days to register as a sustainable grower. Uh, it's just a matter of jumping onto the NGR website, ngr.com.au, or uh, giving them a call on their 1800 number and a short online form there, which will tick the box with all the major... Um, canola buyers across Australia. Uh, it is important that we encourage growers to continue to register um, for their sustainability each year, please. Um, it will help maintain that uh, relationship with the European Union being our primary market for Australian canola. And that will also obviously protect the premium that we've got built into our current canola prices as well. I will mention that uh, there's a very small percentage of growers nationally that will be randomly selected um, for a farm audit post-harvest to be conducted by Sustainable Grain Australia. So uh, if anyone's looking for further information on that front, that's available through Australian Oil Seeds Federation. I have a fact sheet on their website, AOF, or otherwise if you want to get in contact with our team, we'd be happy to forward through any of those details as well. Perfect. Thanks for that. 
Now, I've heard a number of times about 1-800-GRAINS, which is a little bit of a new number for GrainCorp. Greg, can you just give me an understanding of what this number is and some of the services it will provide to growers this coming harvest? Yeah, sure, Izzy. Our grower services hotline team is staffed up and also trained up in readiness, um, looking at a potentially busy harvest through Victoria and southern New South Wales combined. They'll be based up in the Wagga Wagga office. And that 1-800-GRAINS number, as you say, is a new set of digits. The service is the same. And anyone who does have the old 1-800 number saved in your phone, for example, that will still connect through to that team at the moment. Um, as far as what they can achieve for you, well, it's basically just about making things as stress-free as possible for all our growers. But among many other things, they're trained to um, mirror all the different information and actions that you can get through Crop Connect for a start, for anyone needing that um, verbal assistance there. And then um, also if any growers looking to sort of, I guess, up the ante on the communications that you're receiving from Grain Corp, because we are sending out a weekly um, email from the company. There's also daily contract prices being emailed out to growers. Um, there's, there's site operational text messages that will be utilised throughout harvest and also a separate text message list for special pricing updates. So if you'd like to be added to any or all of those, get in contact with that 1800 grains number with your contact details. Thanks, Izzy. Perfect, thanks for that. Now we are getting closer to wrapping up this webinar. So if you do have any more questions, please utilize that chat feature and send them across and we'll, we'll answer them prior to um, finishing up. Now, Craig, we've covered off a lot of different topics in the last 40 odd minutes. Can you just give us a bit of a recap of some of those major themes? Definitely is. I think that the, the major changes this harvest are obviously around our COVID plan in that our sites will be as contactless as possible. Um, the delivery advice forms are required for both samples and deliveries um, and all grain that's delivered will automatically go into warehouse. You can then utilise Crop Connect to complete the transfer to contracts, cash, as pools, as well as place offers or view your invoices and manage your notifications. I would also suggest that you check your personal details with NGR prior to harvest and complete the canola sustainability declaration if you like to. Lovely. Thanks very much for that wrap. Now, prior to finishing up, I just want to go back around the team and get any of their final thoughts. So I'll kick off with Jed. Yeah, I'd just uh, like to back up what uh, the team has said today. Like, certainly we're, I'm, I'm very, very comfortable where our sites are. We've pretty well nearly got all our sites empty, rare and to go. Our, uh, you've met the site managers, uh, very enthusiastic um, and really super keen to perform again, uh, as we've done the last few years. The whole team, so I really reinforce to, uh, you know, for growers, if they've got any concerns whatsoever, please contact our supervisors or site managers and, and we'll certainly communicate anything that their requirements are there for sure. Um, yeah, I think as, as the guys have also said, you know, as our position with our stackers is, is going to be good, very similar to last year. Um, throughout the whole Wimra. Um, so, we're, so we're certainly very, my team is certainly very, very excited to see where this year's going. Certainly had the challenges with the COVID, but I'm um, very, very confident our team will will, uh, will come out on top again. Um, communication, I really do appreciate the, the silo committees that we've really worked in really well the last few years. And I've just reinforced to continue that communication. Um, we like to try to get a couple of days advance when, when the harvest is going to start, you know, the, the conversation I've had just recently, I think uh, we're probably still two weeks away before any canola gets cut down and stuff like that. So any communication like that would really, really be helpful for our team as well. But uh, rest assured, our, our sites are ready to go. Um, probably just on the last note again, we have got COVID, but we also just want to reinforce our, our PPE requirement again in in our, all our sites. Uh, again, appreciate the growers' support in this over the last few years. They've been really, really uh, positive for us, and and which is great. So, just that you know, just make sure we are reinforced to the truck drivers that come on site that they, they are wearing the hats um, and the glasses and and the boots and high-vis clothing, and obviously this year with, with COVID, um, we're going to be requesting everyone to wear a mask when they're coming on site as well. So, uh, yeah, but again, I really appreciate uh, the growers jumping on board. They've, they've certainly, you know, making our job as supervisors or managers on our site much easier to have that difficult conversation. So, uh, again, I'm sure uh, we'll all go through it with a safe um, 
harvest, but uh, really wish everyone the best for 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 this upcoming harvest. And my numbers certainly out there around the whole Wimmera. So uh, go to go to site managers first, though. But uh, come to come to me if you need do need my assistance. More than happy to help. <laughs> No, all all good, and uh, really appreciate uh, everyone's support. And uh, let's let's get into this harvest, ready to go. Thank you, Dizzy. Thanks, thanks, Jed. Uh, what about yourself, there, Greg? Yep, um, thanks, Dizzy. I'll just mention as well uh, uh, regarding wheat uh, feed wheat. So at Narracourt, um, we'll be taking SFW one, which caters for your white feed wheat varieties, including Manny. At um, Hamilton, we'll be taking red wheat there again, SFWR grade, as we call it. And I believe uh, there's an option there for SFW1 for anyone with those white feed wheat varieties as well at Hamilton, so both. And uh, naturally similar to other years at Carpalac, if we're seeing protein in that area, I think the team will be able to swing into H2 there if necessary. So that was just a quick um, update there. And in regards to delivery advices, I'll also just clarify there with the editable version online, but just go to graincorp.com.au, put in the search bar in our website, delivery advice, and the form will come up and you can actually fill in, pre-fill um, a lot of your details there before printing off. So that will save you having to handwrite um, the NGR number and contact details over and over again as an example as well. But further that, in wrapping up, I just wanted to say that we may see some market volatility throughout harvest this season. We're going to have... Um, a lot of export buyers in particular, but buyers in general wanting to um, balance their books with large volumes coming through each day. So it could get a little choppy. Um, so put yourself in the best place you can get the grain um, warehoused and ready to go. And therefore, in other words, get uh, yourself geared up with Crop Connect and the Grain Corp app to take advantage of those market opportunities. And then lastly, just go cats on the weekend. You built tea. Thank you. Thanks for that, Greg. You've got a couple of good tips there, but I'm not sure about the one for the weekend, but we'll see what happens, hey? Um, I'll go across to Craig. Uh, thanks, Iz. Um, look, I'm really excited about the crop, uh, the opportunity that is there. Um, as, as you heard from Jed, the team's really excited and they're keen to get into it. Um, I think that the Wimmera is as well planned as it's ever been and they are ready to go, which is fantastic. Um, I think as a whole, Grain Corps is well planned and it's got as much gear as we've ever had. And, uh, yeah, we're in a really good spot. And uh, that's right through the supply chain and out to the other end to the ports. So, look, I'm hopefully, hopefully to get out and, uh, and see everybody in this harvest. And hopefully it's a, uh, a safe and successful one, successful one for everyone. So, uh, yeah, good luck and I'll see you around. Lovely. Thanks for that. And last but not least, we'll go across to Nigel. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Look, reiterating what everyone said, we've got a good team. We're ready to go. We understand your needs. Um, the key messaging uh, is communication with your site manager. Jed touched on that. You just communicate early, communicate often. Can't reiterate that enough. Uh, so you know what's happening. We know what's happening, and we can best service your needs. And just finally, I thank you for your loyalty and patronage. Perfect. Thanks for that, Nigel. And we've got a comment there about um, Clossie's tip for the weekend. So we'll see what happens, but feel free to give feel free to give Greg Clossy a call on um, on Monday morning, one way or the other. Um, now that concludes the webinar for this afternoon, and I'm hopeful that this session has provided you with some knowledge in regards to what Grain Corp's doing this harvest to ensure your safety, the safety of your community, and also the safety of our staff. I thank you all for your time this afternoon, as well as the questions that you've posted, and I wish you all the very best for harvest.